Hey guys and gals, Effie here. Today we're going to talk about where I have been all summer and please pardon the dogs walking around in the background. Uh, I'm in the basement today so a uh, little out of my normal environment because upstairs is full of stuff but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, before we get into everything I'd like to remind you please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you like book related content, book reviews, talking about my own progress on my novels that I'm writing. Um, it really does help me out if you think you're already subscribed. Go ahead and check and make sure make sure you've rung the bell um, because YouTube does this thing where they just randomly unsubscribe people. So let's talk about where I've been all summer, which so far has been really crazy. Early in, I think it was April, uh, late April, we went up to Minnesota so that I could go to one of the girls' graduations. And then, you know, I got to meet a bunch of my partner's family and that was really cool. Um, and then we all came back down here, me and the guys and the gals. And so we've got a full house. We've got a house of five right now. And then we went to Myrtle Beach together, which was absolutely fantastic. I only live about three hours from the coast, so it wasn't really a, a big drive. So we went for a long weekend, knowing that we can go back kind of whenever we want. Um, Myrtle Beach is beautiful, but expensive. Um, it's definitely a great place to vacation and it's very family friendly. Um, the water is sort of kept shallow for a long ways out into the sea so that even little kids can swim and because it's so shallow it gets warm in the sun which is really nice. I'm not really a beach person. I don't really like large open natural bodies of water but I didn't mind it. I found that I was in the sea every day or in the ocean every day and I really liked it. So you know if you're not really a beach person like me but you want to kind of have that experience for your family try Myrtle Beach. While we were in Myrtle Beach, the girls found a candy store and they went absolutely nuts about it. And I posted about it on uh, TikTok and Instagram uh, while we were there. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go ahead and check me out there. And we also found this really cute little indie bookstore that sells um, new and used books. It's called Back Again Books. And the people there were so delightful. The woman who runs it was really nice and really personable and very chatty, which was great. Um, they have a great selection and they have cats, which the girls loved. So uh, if you're in the area and want to check it out, or maybe you want to check out their social media, I'll make sure that I link all of that for you. Um, but yeah, I really liked it and I enjoyed myself. And the next time I'm in the area, I'm going back again. <laughs> A week or so after we got home from Myrtle Beach, my parents came to visit. Uh, they're in the Midwest. They have a farm in the Midwest. And uh, so they drove in and they had a catastrophe with their vehicle. It had some mechanical problems while they were driving. Um, so once they got here, we had to get that changed out. So that was a whole ordeal. And then just before my parents got here, uh, our landscaper was finally able to book us in and he came and started working on some things. I'm having some big uh, brick flower beds built and then he's going to regrade the backyard because we have some dips that are kind of um, holding water. And we didn't know why. We thought, oh, you know, the ground's just settled, whatever. So come to find out there's a septic tank down there and he hadn't gotten to a point where he would have dug it up. He would have eventually, but um, he hadn't gotten to the point where he would have dug it up. And the way that we found it was the day after my parents left, our air conditioner went out and then the next day we had a sewage line break. <laughs> so on the four hottest days of the year, we had no AC, we couldn't take showers, we couldn't run water in the house, we couldn't wash clothes, we couldn't wash dishes. It was absolutely rank in this house. <laughs> so the air conditioner guy came and fixed that up and then the sewage guys came and they ran a new pipe all the way from the back of the house out to the street. And while they were doing that, they discovered this old septic tank, which looks to have been from the house before this one. This house was built in the 70s, so it's really old. Obviously it had a hole in it or wasn't watertight. Um, so they just disconnected it and buried it like they did back in the day. And um, so the guys broke the lid while they were here and then because they broke the lid it's like half tucked up under our patio so the landscaper comes out and he goes man i wish they wouldn't have broke that lid you know it's going to be a twelve thousand dollar fix and it's like oh geez okay so we called the sewage guys and they're like you know what we messed up we're gonna fix it so they're gonna be out next friday um, to break it apart and take it out and fill it in how it needs to be filled in and all that stuff. And uh, everything's just kind of on hold <laughs> until it get out here. Um, I have this beautiful puddle of <laughs> very fragrant water um, in the backyard because like I said, it's not watertight, but it does hold water. So 
and it rains a lot here, especially during the summer. So it has like three or four feet of water just standing in it and man does it stink. <laughs> so obviously with all of that going on, I haven't done much reading and I haven't gotten much writing done. What I have done is start my final personal edits on Trophy Braid. So the transition from it being a historical fiction novel um, from, you know, assumed imagined Stone Age people in North America to setting it in my fantasy world and making sure that um, all of their actions and reactions and all of the things that they're doing are in line with the place in my world that I'm building. So uh, Trophy Braid is going to be set in the part of Tiranot called the Ajima Steppe, and it is a harsh, barren grasslands. There are things in the grass. The grass is about six feet tall. There are things in the grass that want to kill you and want to eat you. And um, so Kala, the main character's tribe, is this very hardy, very rustic sort of people. Um, and they're very tight-knit. They have to be because of the conditions they live in. And you just sort of walk with her through her journey of sort of becoming a warrior, finding her place in the tribe, and then losing it all. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm looking for beta readers for it. So I have a few. I have five or six. I'd like a few more people that don't know me personally or don't know me very well. So if that's something you're interested in doing, um, I'd like for the, the reading to take about six weeks because that's kind of my time frame for trying to get it out to an editor. So if that's something you're interested in, please reach out to me. I do have one book review coming out for Willie Handler's Deep Into the Weeds um, about a Canadian marijuana farmer. And um, I read the book a couple months ago before all this craziness happened. And I reviewed it then, but I wasn't happy with the review. I wasn't happy with the recording that I did. And I just haven't had time to sit down and re-record it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and edit it up and post that. So look for that here in the coming week. And I also have a video about being scammed for some cover art that I was trying to commission through an independent artist. So uh, be, be sure to look out for that one because it was a hell of a ride. Anyway, that's where I've been and that's what I've been doing and what I've been up to. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. Have an excellent day and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And of course, if you like the way that I present information, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. You can find all of my social media contacts in the description. And of course, if you want to keep up with me and the progress I'm making on my current novel, you can do that at effiewritesbooks.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have an excellent day, and I'll see you next time.